All right, <sighs> enduring ideal. For those of you who haven't seen this deck before, the basic idea is that you use uh, Lotus Bloom and nick those Shrine to Nyx alongside with a lot of uh, white symbols to cast uh, Enduring Ideal, and then Enduring Ideal is a card that gets lock pieces to both, that both prevent our opponent from killing us, whether they be Ghostly Prison, Sphere of Safety, Leyline of Sanctity, Rune Talo, etc., or Solemnity plus Phyrexian on life, and then eventually you win the game via form of the dragon dealing five damage to your opponent over and over and over again. Hey, General Pancakes, thanks for the biddies, I appreciate that. This is, this is like one of the few prison decks I'm like willing to play in modern because when this deck locks up the game with its enduring ideal, it actually kills them very quickly. So the part I find tedious about a lot of prison decks that people like to play is that the way in which they eventually win the game tends to take forever, whereas this one locks the opponent out like 100% fairly quickly and then uh, puts Form of the Dragon into play to actually kill them in, at record at breakneck speed. Morning, Admiral. Looks like your thing says seven months. You got the got the sword next to your name. We do we do have a pink hair emoticon now. Pink hair, don't care. Do 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 do. Once more unto the breach. This deck having uh, four copies of Leyline of Sanctity in the main lets you randomly win a lot of games. Um, yeah, this game's great. It's got uh, it's got Lotus Bloom and it's got uh, Enduring Ideal in it. Steam Flogger checking in with that brand new tier one or that that's not a brand new sub. Got the notifications are so catching me. Like I start I start saying brand new and then I catch like nope I know that username. Thanks for the tier one again, Steam Flogger. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. We're going to bottom the second shrine here, obviously, because it's legendary. Don't want a second copy of a legendary land. Uh, Solemnity is uh, kind of hilarious here against the uh, the old Hardened Scales deck. Punchworthy, checking in for the 37th month in a row. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, friend. The old search for as can't tend to play here. All right, hopefully they don't get too much scary going on here. Second walking ballista. Okay, so that's actually not that bad for us because I do have this detention sphere. I guess they are kind of attacking me fairly quickly. Uh, unlife. Nope, I would love to draw Phyrexian on life. So let's go ahead and do this and then cast this Solemnity here. Make my opponent regret all of their life decisions that have led them to this point of playing modern. So for those not familiar, Solemnity plus Phyrexian on life is actually a hard lock game one against decks that can't take it off the table and have to win via damage. So this card says players and cards can't get counters on them. And then Phyrexian on life says you can only you can only die via infect damage, which is putting poison counters on yourself. So with Solemnity in play and Phyrexian on life, my opponent won't be able to kill me. This is a remnant of bad decks that you've accepted. I actually don't mind this deck too much. Uh, a variation of this archetype actually uh, had put up was 6-0 at one point at the Grand Prix over the weekend. No, I would love to draw that Glacial Fortress. So I guess I guess I just cast the Enduring Ideal, right? I have another Unlife in my deck I go get. Pretty, pretty sure that this is a hard lock against them game one. Post board, post board my opponent's going to have access to usually four copies of Nature's Claim. But game game one, they usually can't, uh, can't power through this. All 
Porphyry Nodes is pretty good here. It just destroys a creature every turn. Sweeper effects are fine. Um, Gideon's Intervention is probably not great. Copy Enchantment can probably go. Cast Out and that are slow. One more trim here. Hey, Covern, thanks for the fifth month in a row. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, that's why they cast out there. It's like kind of, kind of just a cantrip. I think this is fine. Just bring in a bunch of sweepers and stuff. Nah, I can't, this is this isn't really a matchup where we can cast cast out before it's relevant a lot of the time. Um This hand's probably pretty reasonable. It's got Rune Talo and Ghostly Prison as interactive elements, and it's got Sanctity to start plus greater oromancy to protect my stuff. Both my lands come into play tap, just a little bit awkward, but I think this is fine overall. Rudy Cast, thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. Welcome, welcome. Untapped land sounds vulnerable. We're actually we're actually kind of scrying for more untapped lands here, right? That's a that's a temple of enlightenment. Do I keep temple of enlightenment? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and bottom this. I've already got three lands. Yeah, I guess. Like, do I do I think these cards let me live long enough to get to enduring ideal? They probably do. Okay, I'm gonna keep the land. I'm gonna keep the land because I just want to get to seven mana sources in seven turns. I think between Oromancy and Prison, I probably and Rune Tailor probably have enough to stay alive. To just like make seven land drops this game, especially with the Ley Line of Sanctity in play too. So, I want to make sure I get down Oromancy before I get down Ghostly Prison, just in case they're on one Nature's Flame in hand. So I want to want to get this into play to protect my enchantments ASAP. Bottom that. Don't need another copy of that. So, next turn we'll go uh, Oromancy, Mist Veil Plains... And then Ghostly Prison the following turn, most likely. And then once we get the Rune Talo into play, we'll have... Um, once we get the Rune Talo into play, we'll be able to uh, start making extra mana with this. Yeah, sweet. So even though I drew another Ghostly Prison, I think it's just ideal to be as conservative as possible protecting my enchantments here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this into play tapped and get this going first. I'm going to take one attack here for three... Maybe, maybe five if they pump this up. Mm, Arcbound Ravager is actually really good here because it means they can go in on one thing. Are they, are they going in on this like right away? Wow, that's super aggressive. Do they not realize I have Leyline of Sanctity here? Maybe, maybe they think this is lethal. Because it's it's not lethal because I have Leyline in play. So I don't. I could I could field of ruin their horizon canopy here. And like I could field of ruin their horizon canopy to and then play Rune Talo, but I don't want to do that because then if they have nature's claim, they could nature's claim this and shoot me for a bunch in response. But I guess if they nature's claimed me, I would be going to 13, so maybe that's fine. Do I get to enduring ideal next turn? So, yeah, I do I do get to enduring ideal next turn, right? Oh, I have I have Oromancy as well. Yeah, that's true. I don't think it I don't think it really matters, right? Uh 
Oh no. Oh no, I drew the form of the dragon. I drew... I drew... I thought I was gonna go fetch the form of the dragon, but then I drew it. Uh, yikes. Alright, well... Huh. Well, shoot. Alright, what are we... What are we getting here, then? Is it just... Is it just the safety dance? What's the... What's the most conservative play here? <clears throat> So, eventually, we'll get peace of mind to cycle, cycle it out of our hand. I think it's, I think it's just safety dance. If I get, if I get sphere of safety, they can't play enough stuff to kill me next turn. Hand still attack. So, we just want to, like, get, get set up here as ideally as possible. Perfect. Opponent, po opponents had enough. They've seen. They've seen all that they need to see. And that's and that's again one of the reasons why I really like this deck versus something like Lantern Control, just because like it's abundantly clear that your opponent's locked out of the game and they understand they can move on with their lives. A Matt Matic. If by my life or my sword I could stop Twitch chat, I will. I knight the defender of the realm. Go forth and protect us from the Twitch chat menace. Is it a prison deck if it has the decency to kill you properly? I think it is. In my in my mind, uh, a deck gets classified as a prison deck if it's using elements that lock you out, like permanent base control pieces, as opposed to like removal spells and sweepers. And it's definitely like a permanent base lock deck. Are you more of a fan of Rune Talo or Ghostly Prison of Honor? Well, as this deck list will tell you, we have three of each. So those cards are, they're just different in different situations. And some, some situations Rune Talo is much better and some situations Ghostly Prison is much better. Is Blue Moon a prison deck? No, Blue Moon is a terrible control deck that hopes that occasionally by casting Blood Moon it can manage to win a game because the rest of the cards are unplayable otherwise. There's a new sponsor. What do they do? Uh, Lucid Audio is uh, the headset that I'm using. They're actually one of our sponsors we picked up through um, Tempo Storm. So that's why the code Tempo is there. So they do uh, headsets. One of the one of the features of their headsets that are really nice is they're modular in a way. So like this is a headset with a microphone, but because I'm currently using my desktop mic, it actually detaches, so I can set it off to the side, which is nice. And it has a variety of cords. So like this headset has a cord that'll work with an Xbox or a phone or a um, split separate headset uh, audio, um, audio out, audio in connectors. I think this is a mulligan. Yeah, we just don't have any lands, right? Also mulligan. Uh, this hand is also kind of bad, but I guess we'll keep it. Phyrexian on life. Leyland is that he predicts us against some stuff. Phyrexian on life predicts us against some stuff. fountain here all right i guess i guess at this point we just need to draw a bunch of lands if they're playing just guy control this matchup is pretty bad for our deck a lot of our lock pieces are focused around locking out um 
A lot of our lock pieces are focused around locking out uh, creatures, so decks that are the Cryptic Command decks in the format tend to be tough matchups for this deck. I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and find a creature deck. Just gonna move along move along with my life. If you're if your ghostly prisons don't have text, your matchup's not going to be very good. Yeah. Yeah, and like they have they have enough counter spells especially post board that you can like basically never resolve in during ideal. We have we have a couple of copies of Besage you and Silence in the sideboard to like kind of feel like we have a chance, but in reality, you just get dumpster most of the time. Especially especially with uh Mr. Tefri coming in to make you sad. Esper token stack with Dovin could be good. Maybe, I don't know, the thing that made the, made the Abzan token stack good was the fact that it got to play mana creatures to accelerate out its more expensive spells ahead of curve. So maybe maybe a Bant token stack could be okay, or even four color, because like the Abzan token stack was playing Noble Hierarch for blue anyways and Birds of Paradise, so like that kind of enables a splash for you. Nah, I just I just subscribed to the school of thought that if I think a match of magic's gonna be miserable, I'd rather just not play it. Yeah, it's too bad Besage you is a balanced version of it, right? Nice. Why why does this card have to be fair? Instead of unfair nonsense. Um it seems like not amazing, but I think it's in the range of keepable. It's got search to provide some card selection. It's got friction on life and peace of mind to help us stay alive here. Bunch of my there is a there is a search for Escanta in my deck, Burgle. Thank you very much. My opponent has Mulligan to four and is not playing magic. Now, I think View from Above is a rancid card in Jeskai Ascendancy. I think View from Above doesn't solve any problems that that archetype has, and it adds an otherwise unplayable card to your deck. Sweet. Sweet. So, they they mulliganed low and then conceded. So, now they're going to sideboard like we're blue-white control, which I'm not sure, depending on what they are, sideboarding like we're blue-white control might be the same as sideboarding against us, but there's a chance they're going to board incorrectly now, thinking that we're something that we're not, because they mulligan. Hopefully, hopefully we get the London mulligan rule soon enough, and uh, we'll have less games like that that are awkward where one player doesn't do anything and then they die. There was a tweet from the Magic Online Twitter talking about potentially looking into implementing the London Mulligan rule on Moto at some point, which hopefully they're going to do, because I assume a lot of their professional players and people playing in the Mythic Championship are, like, going to be looking to test Modern on Magic Online. So, like, it's pretty different if they, like, have to play a different Mulligan rule on Magic Online versus what they're going to get to play in the tournament. Basic Island... I'll play this Temple of Enlightenment now. I would love another land, I think. I'm going to suspend this Lotus Bloom. 
Why am I shuffling a real deck? Because every day I'm shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Boop, 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 Luminarchs, Luminarchs Ascension. All right, well, that card, that card's actually kind of good against us. That's, uh, that's an interesting one. It's an interesting, interesting one. Our ghostly, our ghostly prisons are alive. Enchantment, enchantment hate confirmed online. Well, our opponent is one and two in a modern league, so there could be literal anything in their magic deck at the moment. They brought in Disenchant. That's rude. I think I'm actually going to Field of Rune them here. Nah, you board in Disenchant against Blue White Control. They, they 10 out of 10 put us on Blue White Control when they conceded last game, so. Squadron Hawk! Our ghostly prisons have never felt so alive! And by that, I mean I get to cast Enduring Ideal next turn. And this game is over! Alright, so our opponent has lost, which is one of the reasons why I like this deck. It's a prison deck that can win, win on turn 4, basically. So we do this. We do this, we cast this, and now if you think your opponent's going to be pesky and interacting with you, you lead on Dovescape, because Dovescape here says whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, counter that spell, and then they get birds equal to that spell's converted mana cost, so have lots of birds opponent. So now, now they can't cast things that destroy my enchantments. And then eventually we will put prison pieces into play so they can't attack us. Yeah, so they could have something like Deputy of Detention or some other creature that could help them get out of this. So the next lock piece that we get, again, we're a prison deck. So you just start asking yourself, okay, how does my opponent get out of this? So the next answer to how they get out of this is Deputy of Detention. So the next card that we get here is Overwhelming Splendor. Because Overwhelming Splendor says, hey, none of your creatures do anything for the rest of the game. So now they can't cast non-creatures to interact with our stuff, and their creatures are just 1-1s. One so we're slowly, slowly tightening the noose here. And then next turn, we'll get Sphere of Safety to make it so they have to pay a bunch of mana to attack us. Vessel, thanks for the five months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Safety dance. Safety dance. Do to do. Do do to do. Boop a do. Do to do. Do to do. Do to do. Vader Wild, thanks for the the quarter of the year. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Oh, yeah, that's true. Form of the Dragon says they can't attack you if they don't have flying, right? So I could just get Form of the Dragon there. That's true. Oh, this says they can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. That's great. Yay! They don't want to play magic with us anymore. Yay! Welcome to jail. Welcome, welcome to jail. Do 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 do. No, split second still gets countered by triggered abilities. So like split second spells don't beat Chalice or Dovescape. What's the win con? Form of the Dragon is the win con. Gosh, this hand is so good if it had lands in it. Uh, this hand is also reasonable. Hopefully scry into a land or two here. Second Lotus Bloom. I think I bought him that. 
I have one. I just want to draw lands to cast my three mana spells on turn three. Unlife. There's a lot of decks in modern that are just cold to unlife plus solemnity game one. So like giving myself the best chance to like cast those on three, four is ideal. What do you mean? Buff your board, buff your board in response to what? Removing the ability from something in response to the ability on the stack does not stop the ability from happening. Life from the loam. Oh, dredge? Dredge? Must be dredge, right? Smells like dredge. Smells like teen spirit. So dredge. Dredge is one of the many decks that is stone cold to unlife plus solemnity game one. <clears throat> So if we hit our if we hit our third land next turn or the turn after, we should be should be good to go. And based on based on their dredge start, it doesn't look like we're gonna be in danger of dying before then. So we probably even miss for a turn or two here. But ideally we hit a land this turn, and then we cast Frixian Unlife, and then next turn we cast Solemnity, and then our opponent concedes, and everything is wonderful. Yeah, so uh, this game is over. Our opponent, our opponent has lost. Welcome to modern. Enjoy your stay. Yeah, they'll have they'll have like three to six ways to kill enchantments post board, but I think this matchup's still pretty good for us because Dredge has a hard time not only with Rust in Peace, but also like Ghostly Prison, Unlife, Solemnity. Like we have a lot of cards they have a problem with post board. Do 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 Dredge does not play Wear Terror. Dredge plays Nature's Claim and Assassin's Trophy usually. Sometimes Maelstrom Pulse, but usually they play Trophy, now that that's legal. Rest in Peace sounds great. Terminus sounds great. Uh, trim. Cast out. Gideon's Intervention. Copy Enchantment. Sounds fine. Sounds fine. Uh, Form of the Dragon is how we win the game. So if they don't if they don't concede, Form of the Dragon is how we kill them. Dovescape's a lock piece. It's not a win condition. Uh huh. I think this is a keep. Leyline is saying that he's like actually okay in this matchup because it means we don't get conflagrated and like prison on life detention to your safety. Like all have all have text. Awesome, Solera. Yeah, I was I was just like I like needed to just like cleanse my palate after having some bad beats on stream yesterday and I was just like, alright, I'm gonna play this deck until I lose a match. And then like I was 5-0 and I was like, alright, I have to get some work done, I'm gonna do some work, and then I'm gonna come back and play a couple more. And then like I was all of a sudden I just like hadn't lost a match. It was in Mythic, and I was just like, alright, well this deck seems great. How do we win after we if we draw a forum after enduring ideals already on the stack? You get peace of mind and you discard form of the dragon and then you either put it back into your deck with misfail planes or return it to play with starfield of nex i forget there's people that don't twitter so i tweeted i tweeted this last night if you do twitter and don't follow me you should follow me this this deck list last night, I went 10-0 into Mythic with. Perfect. Would love to draw land.
Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was wrong in my assessment of Domri. So my original assessment of Domri was that it was just worse than Vivian Reed and All Shells. But I think in actuality, it's just worse than Vivian Reed in decks that are mid-range and more controlling. Whereas when you slot him into a more aggressive shell, he's very good in a more aggressive shell. How much does chat slash ghosting affect win rate? For, for starters, ghosting is much less of an issue than most salty, salty streamers would have you believe. Ghosting, ghosting, especially on Magic Arena where like you're not playing for a ton. Like it's, it's not like on Magic Online, I think it's more common because Magic Online is like pretty directly gambling. Whereas like with Magic Arena, it's like, well, you're just kind of... Is it a video on my site? No, I wasn't recording. So when I'm making content, I I play worse. It's just something that's just like the truth of the truth of the matter. Like there's, when I'm making content, there's like six other, when I'm making, when I'm making content, there's like six other things going on at any given point, which makes it harder, harder to keep track of everything. Big Dumb... I don't even know what the Oracle text is on Big Dumb Ray. Uh, honestly, Be Rich, I think after... After yesterday's experience with... Um, huh. Do I... Do I unlife here? Or do I assume Ghostly Prison plus Leyline means I'm not going to die and just play Search to get some filtering going? Excuse me. I think I kind of just want to get some filtering going. They only have one more Creeping Chill in their deck. So if they dredge Creeping Chill and attack me for five, that's only eight, right? So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and play Search for Azkanta here. Because I think we're pretty likely to not die. Pretty unlikely to die. I guess they could dredge Creeping Chill, Nature's Claim my Ghostly Prison and attack me. But even then, I'm still okay because I gained four, right? So, I don't think Try Hard Tuesdays are going to be a recurring thing like I thought they were. Because it just, like, yesterday reminded me that, like, playing playing to win is just kind of frustrating. The tension, the gas. So, they have to pay mana for this. And then if they have, if they have Nature's Claim for this Unlife, we could be in trouble. Yeah, I agree, Pelly. Ooh, that's exciting. I would love a land. So, do I do I unlife or do I detention sphere here? I can't. I can't sphere of safety yet. I can't. I can't sphere of safety yet. This only. This is only mana neutral at the moment. I think I want to unlife. I think I want to unlife. I don't. I don't even think that like the decks I played yesterday were bad, or that streaming is necessarily strictly hard. Stanton, so much as like like if you go back and watch the matches that we played yesterday, we got like pretty genuinely unlucky in a number of the matches that we played yesterday. I think it's I think it's more of a testament to how much variance magic involves than anything. No, I'm just going to be working out of the deck queue zombie. There's there's just too many decks in the deck queue for me to not be working out of the deck queue when we're streaming. Yeah, that's true. That's a good read. The fact that they didn't leave up Stomping Ground means they likely don't have it. Uh, I'm going to bin Rune Taylor. So now I can put the Safety Dance into play, right? So now, now it costs them infinite mana to attack with every creature. I can stay on top. Infinite just seven manas like infinite for for the opponent's deck. I 
The professor called you the biggest MTG streamer on Twitch. I mean, by most, by many metrics, that's objectively true. Depends on, depends on what metrics you're going for. What metrics you're going by. The professor's great. I've uh, worked with him, worked with him before on a number of occasions. Metrics or dimensions, yep. All right, so uh, first things first, I think we just go get Oromancy, right? Just like protect all of our stuff, make sure they can't kill us. Let the, let the noose tighten. Even if they don't animate every card, what's stopping them from porting modern? Well, for starters, they would need to animate all the cards because the point of Arena is to have it be a video game. And if you just skip all the animation, suddenly it's just Magic Online in, in many ways. The second is that coding every card is also not trivial. Look at that. Look at that. Three in... Three and one with the concession to just guy control because I value my life, my life and my sanity. Uh, yeah, seeing sweet. Hopefully they're a thought seize deck since we got Leyline here. Yeah, you cycle that street wraith opponent. Are you ready to stress test arena later? What does that mean? Then this deck go 10-5 at GPLA? I don't know. Probably something close to it. This deck's super reasonable. We've played this deck on stream a bunch of times before. It's one of the many decks you can find on my website. Do, 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 Just so you can have the jargon correct, Ribson, you're referring to Deckmaster. Deckmaster is the thing that lets you mouse over cards on the screen. Stream Stream Decker does work. That's the thing that has the deck list overlay on the screen for you. Yeah, I agree, Burgle. I think this I think this deck has a lot of tools against a lot of the popular decks in modern. I think I'm binning a land tier. I think I'm looking for more impactful enchantments to lock the Skirmag Angler out. Need to need to get Ghostly Prison or something like that into play. Um just the other one, the uh, Rune Halo, something something to stop this from being like damage to us every turn ASAP. Alabama, thanks for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. This matchup might be hard for us, even with Leyline on one. I guess I guess if we get if we get enough lock pieces into play, it can't be too terrible. Yeah, that fat stubby D. So like now, next turn, I have to hope they don't have another counter spell, and I hit like Rune Talo. Yeah, yeah. Even even without them having discard spells, like Sub Denial's real good. Yeah, Team Battle Rage just dead. Welcome, welcome to Modern. People, people are gonna think we didn't win any matches with this deck. It's this deck. It's gonna be like a forty-five minute YouTube video, just like forty-five minutes, but we went like three and two. <laughs> no, no, come back, believe. Of course, Wall of Roots is still broken. What do you think this is? Why Why wouldn't Wall of Roots still be broken? Uh, 
Is this a besiege you matchup? That's a good question. I don't know what I'm cutting. I think I'm supposed to bring in my removal spells. Is this not a ghostly prison matchup? Just because their spells are so cheap and they can often kill us with one with one threat? I don't I don't know that it is, Burgle. Solemnity combos with Unlife. Solemnity plus Unlife uh, ends the game. This is definitely a Nodes matchup. I agree with that. Nevermore seems mediocre. I agree. There's two different ways you can get around drawing Form of the Dragon. Look at the deck list and figure it out. I believe, I believe in you. You can piece it together. We dumpster dredge. This deck is very good against dredge. If you hate, if you hate losing to dredge, this is a great deck to play. Field besage you swap. I could see that. This definitely isn't a silence matchup. We don't have enough time for that. This hand is good as far as non lay Lander Sanctity hands go. Hey, Burgle, you're here. If we make the mana in Vanifier Cord better by cutting the red sources, is it still right to play Wall of Omens over Coiling Oracle? Or should they just be Coiling Oracles? What do you what do you think? Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I think Corling Oracle is probably correct, even with only 21 lands. I do, I do love me some Coiling Oracle. Also, if I have more blue sources, should there be a Frilled Mystic in the 75 or Mystic Snake? Maybe. Probably not. Glenn's probably better, right? Glenn's, Glenn's probably better. Coiling Oracle and I, we go way back. Way, 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 way back. Yeah, I think I think I have four red shocks at the moment, and we could definitely just cut down to like just two to three and like cut the grooves. Double threat there is fun for us since I have porphyry nodes. Stub me, baby. Give me that fat stubby D. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Always bring your backup nodes, chat. Always bring your backup nodes. As per gifts, I think the actual gifts package is kind of clunky in that deck. If you check on my YouTube channel, uh, Pato, I believe we played Espergorios in... I'm pretty sure we played Espergorio Gift this year, even. If you check if you check my modern videos, I'm pretty confident we played it in 2019. So if you want to find an updated list from me, you can check there. Corvmex, thanks for the 10-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right, so we're losing on life here. I took my D-Sphere, huh? That's interesting. So, Porphyry Nodes is going to kill Gurmag Angler here. We'll cast on life next turn. Oh, this is cute. They're, they're surgicaling me just to make their thing bigger. I like it.
Do you field of rune to lock them off of red for team or battle rage? Huh. That's a good suggestion, actually. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. Yeah, Village Bellringer lets you recombo in the event that they lightning bolt your Kiki Jiki. Yeah, Karn, it's it's real bad. It's uh I read an article the other day that was talking about how um we're basically like frogs in a pot of boiling water where like cl extreme climate events are becoming so frequent that we can't recognize them as extreme anymore because we're just becoming kind of blunted to them because they're if they're all the time are they really extreme? Listen, this isn't Trump's Twitter account. You don't get to post things like there's no climate change here with no repercussion. Don't let the door hit you in the backside on the way out. Quillman, thanks for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for the support. Thanks for keeping me around. Uh, enduring Ideal. Um, if you... If you want a deck that's really good against the linear, non-interactive decks in Modern, I actually think this deck is kind of... I actually think this deck's a really good choice for beating up things like Dredge and Storm and other decks that aren't interacting with you. The... the we, we got pretty handle... We got pretty beat up there by Grixis Shadow in the last match, and then I actually just conceded to Jeskai Control because Jeskai Control matchup is super miserable between their Cryptic Commands and their Tefries, so... The decks that play a lot of interaction can be tough for this one, but if your format that you're expecting is a lot of uh, linear, non-interactive decks, I think this deck's a great choice. There's a lot of decks in Modern that just, like, have a hard time with Ghostly Prison, and especially Game 1 on Life plus Lemony is just a hard lock against a lot of people. So. That's, that's Enduring Ideal. Right, let's uh let's roll along, shall we? How cheeky is a one of fall the thren with rip? I think it's just bad because you're going to like if you're getting fall the thren, you have enduring ideal going, and then you probably have better things to be doing with your with your enduring ideal than getting fall the thren plus rip. Yeah, yeah, the, the the cryptic command decks are a real tough matchup. No matter no matter how you slice it. Uh black white cats, black white cats. Hey there, kitty cat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ho. Do 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 do. Beer, do, 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 do. Life and suddenly there were animations. Suddenly, suddenly there were animations.
Yeah, all of Roots Bug had a three year anniversary. Life's, life's just so much better when you ignore reality, though. So much, so much better. Dream Decker. Whoop, that's the wrong one. <laughs> 